Humans have not traveled beyond Earth orbit since the Apollo program ended in 1972. NASA has officially been trying to change that since 2004 when President George W. Bush announced what became the agency's Back to the Moon Constellation program. In 2010, the Obama administration canceled Constellation, but two key pieces of the program survived, the Orion crew capsule and a rocket that became what is now the Space Launch System, or the SLS. Both vehicles are being developed using classic cost plus contracting, where NASA pays for the full cost of development even if costs rise far above initial estimates. NASA's Artemis program will use the SLS to blast astronauts to lunar orbit aboard Orion, where they will meet up with a previously emplaced lunar lander to travel to the surface and back. It's worth noting then that rather than building a lunar lander in-house the way it does with the SLS and Orion, NASA opted to pay space companies a fixed price to build their own lunar landers, which the companies will own. With little funds to go on and the prospect of seeing the moon landings drag out for many more years, the agency finally decided to pick the cheapest and most likely to succeed option. SpaceX. NASA awarded billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk's company with a $2.9 billion contract for the development of its Starship Super Rocket as a lunar landing system for astronauts in the Artemis 3 mission, slated to launch in 2025. Unfortunately, the path back to the moon is long and fraught with danger, both in the real physical sense and also in the contractual legal sense. Indeed, legal battles between NASA, SpaceX, and Blue Origin have delayed the development of a critical component of the Artemis program, the human landing system, for months. That is until last November when the court finally ruled in favor of NASA and SpaceX that the ball has started to roll again. SpaceX has actively worked on the lunar-optimized Starship development at its Starbase facility located in Boca Chica Village, Texas. NASA released in March a document that features photos of the SpaceX Starship lunar lander elevator and airlock prototype. SpaceX says it is working with NASA to ensure crew safety and performance. The elevator will be used to bring astronauts down to the lunar surface. The document is a set of presentation slides with images of Artemis astronauts checking out the elevator and airlock, including an image labeled Crew Cabin VR Evaluation. It's probably a virtual reality video simulator of how the Starship cabin interior will look like and operate. The document does not provide elaborate information nor technical details about the systems. Regardless, no one can deny its superiority when it comes to power. SpaceX's Starship is designed to be much more than a lunar lander. It's actually an end-to-end -end transport system designed to ferry people to Mars. The vehicle launches and lands upright, similar to the way the company's Falcon 9 boosters return to Earth for reuse. SpaceX has been working on Starship for years, building prototypes and destroying them at a rapid pace as they perfect the vehicle's ability to land upright. Not only was it impressed with the way it landed, but Starship also wowed NASA scientists with its massive payload. As part of its Artemis program to return humans to the moon this decade, NASA has a minimum requirement that its human landing system must be able to deliver 865 kilograms to the lunar surface. This is based on the mass of two crew members and their equipment needed for a short stay. However, Starship will, in fact, be able to deliver 100 metric tons to the surface of the moon, which is more than 100 times NASA's baseline goal. And it's really hard to think about what that means in a tangible way. 100 tons is four fire trucks. It's 100 moon rovers. My favorite way to explain this to my kids is that it's the weight of more than 11 elephants. Artie Matthews, Starship Human Landing System Program Manager for SpaceX said, NASA wants to maximize the performance that Starship offers on lunar landings with the potential to carry large payloads. While the original HLS competition had a requirement to carry only 100 kilograms of cargo to the surface and back in addition to two astronauts, said Logan Kennedy, HLS surface lead at NASA, the later sustained missions will increase that to 182 kilograms to the surface and 160 kilos back with a goal of a thousand kilos down and back. We're going to leverage all that we can on this mission to try and take up and down as much as we can using the size of their system. Lisa Watson Morgan, manager of the Human Landing System Program, in a presentation at the annual meeting of NASA's Lunar Exploration Analysis Group on August 23rd, said, She said, SpaceX has been a fantastic partner on HLS so far, with close cooperation between the company and the agency. SpaceX has been involved in the Artemis 3 landing site selection process to ensure potential landing regions are compatible with Starship. NASA, in turn, has its personnel, including astronauts, visiting SpaceX facilities for reviews and hardware tests. That includes one of the unique attributes of Starship, 
which is the elevator required to go from the crew cabin to the surface. It's a very tall lander. It doesn't look like the traditional landers that we've all seen in the past, so it can be hard to reconcile that mentally, Watson Morgan said. She assured scientists at the meeting that the elevator design was robust, saying that it was multi-fault tolerant and designed for operating in lunar conditions. In his presentation, Kennedy showed images of a full-scale mock-up of the elevator that SpaceX built for crew in the loop tests, including ones where astronauts wore simulated spacesuits to test the ability to get in and out of the elevator. Some aspects of the overall Starship lunar landing architecture, though, remain unclear. The concept of operations for the lander involves SpaceX launching a Starship into low Earth orbit that will serve as a fuel depot, which is filled by subsequent Starship launches that serve as tankers. The Lunar Lander Starship will then launch, fill its tanks at the depot, and head to lunar orbit. Neither NASA nor SpaceX, though, have said exactly how many launches will be required for a single Starship lunar landing mission, an issue of contention during protests of the SpaceX HLS award last year by Blue Origin. How many? However many is needed, that is how many will launch, Watson Morgan said. Hopefully, they'll give us a specific number next year. In the meantime, NASA tapped SpaceX to provide a second crewed demonstration landing on the moon as part of its Artemis Lunar Exploration Program, a huge win for SpaceX and a possible gesture at improving the relative lack of existing competition for such services. The second landing mission is for the Artemis IV, which is currently on the books for 2027. On top of securing NASA's Artemis IV mission astronauts a ride to the lunar surface, the additional contract, also known as Option B, will also allow SpaceX and NASA to pursue and demonstrate upgrades that will make Starship an even more capable and cost-effective moon lander for the long term. The modification is likely to embark in the coming year, and we all can't wait to see it. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.